All right, guys, I'm going to show you basically, well, this is how I'm doing it. I've never done this before, so this is completely trial and error. I'm sure people have done something similar to this before, but basically, for any of you guys who are running basically a bigger custom turbo, or even just want to change to AN lines instead of the crappy rubber ones with clamps, because we all know AN lines are much cleaner and, I guess, more user-friendly product. So basically, um, what my initial plan was, um, was to pull this off and to weld like a dash 10 uh, weld on fitting onto the top of it. But I'm pretty sure this is actually pressed into the head. So um, I don't want to disrupt all that because it's a brand new motor. I don't want to cause any more dramas. So what I'm going to do is basically JB weld this uh, weld on fitting which I've drilled out already um, on here so I'm going to show you guys how to do it and I'll report back on how strong it is and how it works um, in the next couple of days so hopefully I don't make this video for nothing and have a complete failure on my hand so So what I've done, uh, this measures at the widest point, 18 mil roughly. So I've gone through basically with a strip step drill, as you can see now. I've gone through and reamed that out to 18 mil, and then I've got an 18 mil drill bit and just kind of counterboard that 18 mil a bit deeper. So we got a bit of a shoulder for this to sit on. So that sits on by probably a good eight, eight mil or so, and it actually forms a pretty good seal in there, just as it is. Uh, but obviously it's not tight. All right, so what I'm gonna do is basically use some steel wool um, to ho hopefully this is coarse enough to rough this up and give it a good surface for the epoxy to bite to. So another cool little thing that I've come up with, um, this is mainly for when I do the epoxy, but I'll use it now anyway to stop any crap dropping down into the head, is I've basically got a bit of 1.6 mil uh, stainless TIG wire and I've put a um, regular kind of um, ear protection earbud hooked onto it. And I'm just gonna push that down into there, like so. So that will basically form a, a, form a seal. And then once I've done um, sanding or whatever, I can then pull that out and it will pull all the shit out with it. In theory. Okay, so that's not really working too well, so I'm gonna get some probably 120 or 240 grit sandpaper and rough this up better. So the main thing you wanna do is obviously get all the top 10 mil or so basically back to bright metal so that this epoxy will have the best chance of bonding onto it. So I have used um, this JB Well for a number of things. Um, actually a number of pretty critical things too and it's held up really well. Uh, the first one I can think of is Andrew's Datsun 1600 or 510 for you American viewers. Um, that had a crack in the block of his SR20 um, and that's a full built motor and after he bought the car we realized that it had a crack in it and we actually basically V'd it out and repaired it with JB Weld and it is doing really well. So, surprisingly, yeah. So yeah, next step, uh, with a clean microfiber rag, I'm just using some uh, wax and grease remover. Just gonna clean this surface up as clean as possible. You could also use methyl or acetone or any kind of thinners, I guess. Any alcohol-based thinner um, works really well. Now I'm just going to do the same thing to the inside of this, which is going to be JB'd as well. So yeah, and for you guys watching who haven't seen my channel before, um, be sure to check out my other videos, especially the ones on this motor because this is a full Cosworth closed deck, the whole shebang, uh, EJ 257, 450 kilowatt capable. So this thing's going in my 99 GT Forester. Um, and it should make some serious jam. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of cool custom shit on it too, so. 
All right, so this is the stuff we're using. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, JB Weld. It says it dries basically as strong as metal, and I, I vouch for that, it's pretty good. As long as you prepare the surface right, that is the key thing. So this is just an equal 50-50 mix. Basically the epoxy ready to go. So let's get this set up and let it set. All right, so I'm just gonna put this as neat as I can inside this fitting here. So you got it, you wanna be careful with this. Um, Cause if you go too over the top, it could actually clog up. We'll restrict the size of the um, port for the oil drain which you definitely don't want. All right, so that is all coated up. Um, so I'm just gonna feed it over this wire. And basically plonk it on pretty centrally like that. And then I'm just gonna pull this out. which has in turn basically pulled the epoxy in and wedged it around all those uh, gaps in there. And it has also now um, left a nice clean passage down the oil drain tube into the motor. It's pretty solid on there, to be honest. I think what I'll do now is somehow tape this on so it can't fall off. I'll flip the motor upside down and then I'll just run like a bit of a um, bead of JB Weld on the underside. And that should be more than enough to hold this in place, hopefully. All right, so I'm gonna try and delicately um, Spread this around the other side of the little weld on fitting. Um, I might have to touch a little bit up later once it dries tomorrow where the tape is, but we'll see how it goes. guys so uh, yeah two days have passed now so 48 hours later coming back to the motor we can have a look at this oil drain so I'll spin this around as you guys can see um, that JB weld has gone rock hard that is seriously as strong as a weld like it says pretty much um, I'll spin this motor over so you can probably hopefully see through there. It's all nice and clean. So I think you definitely need to do the trick where you pull the um, the earplug through that to basically clean out the center so no crap basically builds inside there and restricts the size. So hopefully there's enough room to basically get the um, spanner in there to do up the AN fitting. So speaking of which, I'll grab one and we'll see how well it um, I'll tighten up to full basically torque and we'll see if that will hold and if so then we're basically good to go when it's on the car. Alright so I'll just grab one of the breather lines uh, from the motor that goes to the PCV uh, but anyway this is a Dash 10 um, fitting 100 series so I'll put that on and we'll just torque it down and if this doesn't snap off then we're cooking with gas. That is as tight as I normally do them, um, and that feels as solid as if it was one piece. So, there you go, it does work. All right, so I might just sand that up a little bit, uh, probably even give it a coat of black engine enamel or something, make it look nice and neat. Uh, stop that rusting as well where I've sanded it back, and yeah, we're good to go when we chuck it in the motor and 
hook the turbo up. So yeah, be sure to follow along with this build if you're not already and stay tuned to make some decent power.